everyone, this is Jane with Barlow Herbal, and happy Sunday, January 8th of 2023. I have a great list for you today of six things that you can implement into your life and your thought process, your mindset, that will radically change your health, and in turn, that will radically change your life. Now, number one is for each of us to discover our purpose in life. We need to determine the reason that we wake up each morning. Choose something that aligns with your strengths, your passions, and the needs of the world. That is what gives life meaning. We all know that when we wake up with purpose, that we're gonna automatically take better care of ourselves because we have purpose. And we know that if we are struggling with our health, if we're struggling with extra weight, we're struggling with, with things that we know we can control, what we put in our body, what we don't put in our body, how much exercise do we get, how much sleep do we get? How much stress control do we have? How much disconnection from mainstream media, social media, and from the negative things in our life, how much do we disconnect from that? So when we ask ourselves, what is our purpose? And you might need to sit down and really determine what is my purpose? And it's different for everybody. We all have a different purpose. So that is number one. Number two is to let go of what you cannot change. Recognize that there are some things that are just out of our control and that's okay. That's okay. Let go and focus on what you can change. So let go and focus on what you can change because there are things that are beyond what we can control. In fact, I think that's why we get so much fear and stress and anxiety and maybe even depression is because we want to control. We want to control the outcome. We want to know what the future holds. We want to know um, all kinds of things. And we want to control every single situation and aspect of it. You know, I, this is one of those things that over time, I've really just learned to control what I can control and not even get worked up about it if it doesn't work out exactly how I thought it should. And, and for me to be able to move on and realize it's okay. If, if I can't control something, like let's take something really, really big. To a certain extent, we can't control what happens in politics. That's a big, very much triggering comment. But we do, we do what we know. We do our research, we do our due diligence, we take the time and the effort to vote. We hope that we hope that everything uh, is done on the up and up. We know that that can be very questionable, especially in today's world. But once there is a certain thing that's happening and what we do is we, we take that out of our, our stress. We say, okay, I've done everything that I can and now there are things that I cannot control. There are things that we cannot control. Um, we can't control what's happening on the other side of the world. We can read about it. We can volunteer for things. There's There are things that we can do, but there are things that we can't control. So we need to realize that it's okay. And we need to focus on what we can change. So number three is to find peace in imperfection. This one is a big one. Think about people like me. If you're like me and you're a bit of a, per a perfectionist, you like things a certain way, you like things cleaned a certain way, you like things organized a certain way, um, you like things like people being on time or, or whatever that is. That can cover a whole broad range of things. Being a human is being imperfect because there's no such thing as being a perfect human. There's just not. And we need to be okay with imperfection. That's what helps define all of these nuances of what makes us all so amazing is that we all are different and someone's idea of being perfect might be someone's complete opposite idea of being perfect you know I think that this is so relative to so many things but be okay with imperfection um, recognize that nothing in like life is perfect including yourself and others instead of striving for flawlessness find joy in the imperfections that make life unique. So make that a mind swap and find the joy in things that make life unique. Because there, you can be amused by an imperfection or you can be completely bothered by it. 
and you get to choose. You get to choose that. Okay, so number four. This one is really, really good. Preserve your dignity during tough times. Show emotional maturity and self-control even when faced with challenges. Remember to be patient, resilient, and understanding. Now this, to me, this is especially relevant during these last three years that we've all been together uh, collectively. And with social media, with how we're all able to step onto a platform and have a voice in some way and in as big a way as we want with how much we engage. You know, I've been actually saying this for almost this whole three years. How are your actions gonna age? Are you gonna look back you know, from two and a half years ago, two years ago, last year, this, you know, whatever. And are you gonna be a little bit embarrassed or ashamed or whatever of what you did or what you said? So I think that to stay classy in all situations, you can still be true to yourself. You can still speak and give your opinion and you can still have a very good discussion. But I think bringing back the art of self-control and and dignity, bring dignity to your everyday conversations, your interactions with others, compassion and kindness and caring never goes out of style, never, ever, ever, ever. And even if someone says, okay, you were blind to everything that was going on, you were just way too nice about everything, okay, I'd rather be way too nice about something than look at back at actions that were less than stellar and try and then try to say you know then try to apologize for it even though you can still apologize for things that maybe you realize maybe you were wrong about something but that is that is not that so preserve your dignity during tough times you know this this to me is going to be extremely relevant even as we move forward into these next few years because there is so much uncertainty and I think that we can all control so much and then we need to we need to be able to go with the flow and bring our best selves forward I, I really love that number five don't compare yourself to others everyone has a different timeline and a unique path this can be a little bit painful to watch others be on a different timeline um, but also realize that their, their timeline is what's is is good for them and it might not be good for you and you might be saying what you're doing is affecting me and partly that might be true but realize that everybody has their unique path and the best thing that we can do is show an example of what the changes are that you might want in the world show the change be the example it's important to focus on your own progress rather than trying to measure yourself against others. Now, this is really relevant for the climate that we live in with the advent of social media where everybody can post their life, post all the things they're doing, post all the fancy things they have, and it can give you a case of what they call FOMO, fear of missing out. It's like, I want what that person has, and my I'll never be like that, and. I will tell you for the most most part, it's what you're experiencing with other people's lives is has a big filter on it. And it's always made to look like it's absolutely perfect and better than it really is. And it's not meaning that they don't have nice things and they don't have this great life and they don't have this beautiful, uh, you know, they're not these beautiful rich people, but it most of the time that is not real and it's not real life and to compare yourself to that is it, you're doing yourself a deep injustice for the beautiful soul and the beauty that you have resi residing within you. And I think that comparing ourselves to others can be very damaging to the beautiful uniqueness of what we each have. So that one, that one to me is super important. Now the last one here is always seek to improve in all areas of your life. Even small changes can add up and make a big impact over time. Okay, this is the this is the compound effect. You know, um, a good a good example of this is you know, for me, I will say, you know, I've always been a supplementer. I always will 
have supplemented from when I first was pregnant with my boys and I was very young when I had my kids, I was 20 and 21, so I was very young. I took a really good prenatal vitamin and I, and I did things that I knew were very good for me supplement wise when I was, when I was pregnant. Then as my life has gone on, and I, I understand that part of this is because I grew up with a dad who, who did natural medicine and herbal medicine. And I know that this gave me this huge, beautiful jump start into my adulthood. But what I've done is I've been consistent. I've never ever said, uh, I'm not sure if these are working or, you know, I've, I've stayed a researcher and I've, as my life has changed over time, and as I've gotten older, I've swapped up my supplement routine, but I've always been consistent. I've been consistent with the way that I pay attention to my sleep and my stress levels. I haven't always been super good at it, but I've always paid attention to those things. And I think that if we're, we realize that even small steps add up to big things, um, it's that little situation of, you know, the race between the tortoise and the hare you know, you can do something super fast uh, to get a result you want, but it might, you might crash and burn. Uh, but if you just steady, 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 take the steps you need to implement the habits that you know are gonna be, make a huge impact and then be consistent with them. Add them so that they're not overwhelming to you. You know, I have reached a point with my supplements, I have this, corner on the counter in my kitchen. It sits right next to my teapot and I've got all the supplements that I take and it's in this corner. And I have got this routine 100% dialed in. And I still tweak it a little bit here and there depending on you know, what I'm going through. I just had this you know, big surgery on my knee and so I tweaked it a little bit to go after inflammation, to go after some of the pain I was having and to give me the nourishment for for the healing of the nerves and the ligaments and everything that I was going through. So there were, there were some changes that I made as, as I've been healing from this. So I think to stay consistent and to realize that it's your responsibility and not anyone else's responsibility to do things like that. So uh, I think that I'm gonna wrap it up right there. I think these things are so critically important, these six. And if you got to the end of this, okay, we're only at 12 minutes. So here's what I wanted to kind of bring out. So at the bottom of the email that this is attached to is uh, a little offer for a free calendar. Now I had a calendar here and I actually gave, gave it away. I should, have, I should have waited till I did this video. But after a very long time, about four years in the making, I have finally finished my book. Now this is an update of my dad's original book that he wrote when I was in high school. I've completely updated all of the information. His, informa his book had uh, 48 plants in it. And my uh, addition of this, which I've added to this, has 46 more plants in it. So there are 94 plants. It's got a full color photograph of the plant so you can learn how to identify it. There's a, a, an illustration of the plant where you can see the root, the leaves, the flowers, you can be able to identify by looking at an illustration. Then there's uh, information on where it grows, what time of day to collect it, where to, where to collect it, how to process it into a tincture, a decoction, a tea, a poultice. This is a beautiful, beautiful field guide that is, like I said, an update and a reformat and an adding to of my dad's original work. And it has been a beautiful labor of love. So what I've done is I've, I've put together um, a, cattle, a calendar that has 12 of the plants from the book. And it's black and white, it's totally beautiful. It shows off some of the illustrations from the book and some of the plant information. Now what I wanna do is I wanna give this calendar to anyone who wants it. So if you go to our website, you will be able to click a button and it'll be, it, there'll be a link to this underneath it, underneath this video. The calendar is free if you live inside the US. Unfortunately, we're not able to ship it out of country. All you have to do is add it to your order. Just add it to your cart and we will slip it in with your order. Now, if you wanna simply have just the calendar, then there will be a shipping, shipping charge to ship the calendar to you. But 
Um, I am so excited for this book to come out. Uh, it is coming together all beautifully. My best indication of when it will be ready to go to print is at the end of this month, which is January of 2023, if you're watching this at a later date, or the first part of February. So whew, this has been um, quite a journey, and I am so, so, so proud of it. In fact, my youngest son, Brian, which many of you know, helped me with a ton of the research on this book because like I said, not only did we add a bunch of new plants to this, but we updated all of the information in my dad's original work. So Brian is listed as a co-author because he did so much research with me. Now here's another cool thing. All of the illustrations were done by one of my sisters. Uh, her name is Joni. She's actually the oldest of all of us. So out of the 14 kids, Joni's at the top and I'm right underneath her. And she is a talented, talented artist. Now the cool thing is, is I have a lot of talented artists in my family and uh, it, 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 I could have had a contribution from all of my siblings on this, but this is definitely a labor of love for multiple people in my family. And I'm, I'm excited for those of you who are interested in getting this book. I know we've had people ask us over the years that my dad has passed, is his book still available? And it's been out of print for probably more than 40 years. So uh, this is a very exciting thing, and I, if it resonates with you, this is something you'd love to have. Um, it's a beautiful field guide to help identify and utilize some of the world's most healing plants. So I hope you have a beautiful second week in January. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, um, but uh, I hope that you can take these little nuggets and flow them into this coming week and not necessarily make a New Year's resolution, but starting today, implement some of these beautiful, beautiful things. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. I hope you have a brilliant week. Um, drop me a comment if you feel so inclined. Also hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not, and uh, we will see you next week.